Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on Momentum Finance Channel. My name is Mo and I'm super excited to be walking you through another uh, stock investment portfolio challenge weekly update here uh, on Momentum Finance. And uh, we have a ton of uh, updates to go through. In fact, this week has been uh, different from the past. Uh, as you know, for those of you who've been following our journey, the goal of this portfolio is to grow it from mere $5,000 all the way to a quarter of a million dollars. And for the most part, every week, we, you see us adding new uh, high growth or dividend stocks or ETFs to our portfolio. But this week is different in a sense that we actually uh, sold uh, quite a decent number of our holdings. In fact, close to over $9,000 worth of stocks or ETFs that we managed to sell. And I will be sharing with you why exactly we did make this move, what is the goal behind it, and how is uh, actually a step towards helping us getting on track with our financial freedom goals that we have in mind. I'll provide that um, transparency with you as well. There were a number of other stocks or TV that we bought this past week and we'll be sharing with you uh, those ones as well. So don't go anywhere. Let's get into it. All right. As you see here on our Vast Simple portfolio, we have three different accounts. We have our personal account, which currently has a balance of over $18,000 invested uh, with some cash as well and our registered retirement savings plan which we haven't touched total balance is shown here and our tax-free savings account which currently has 21 positions of note for those of you who've been following our past videos our personal accounts now has only 12 positions which is a lot less than what we had given the fact that we've actually sold off a lot of our holdings here and i will be sharing with you in a moment why that has been the case but before we do that let us walk through each one of our positions share with you transparently how many shares we have and what has been our returns as a whole uh, we have 16 shares of bank of nova scotia it is uh, showing up overall positive return of 20 percent over 20 percent close to 21 percent uh coarser gaming we have maintained our 13 share it is showing a negative close to 21 percent emerge arc genomics and biotech etf we took our symbol eagb this is the canadian version of arc invest related arc invest and we have 30 shares it's showing a negative 2.67 percent pfizer we are maintaining our 22 shares it's showing a negative uh, positive 41 percent pizza pizza we have 14 shares and it's showing a positive return of 5.21 percent real matters we've actually gradually added more shares unfortunately it's showing a, a negative return of 25 uh, percent uh, it had a huge decline although it's slightly recovered but still is showing greatly in negative territory and the approach that we were taking with real matter is trying to add more and bring our cost average lower in this case royalty pharma we have 30 shares it's showing a negative 10 percent royal bank of canada we have added some fractional shares continue to be doing that and currently we have 5.30 uh, fractional shares of royal bank of canada and showing a positive return close to 31 percent it's a dividend paying company one of the largest canadian banks similar to that we have toronto dominion bank another large canadian bank uh, which we've been adding and buying through fractional shares now we have 8.76 uh, shares of toronto dominion bank and it's showing a positive return of 14.9 uh, percent Vanguard uh, FTSE Canadian capped REIT index ETF. We have 12 shares. It's showing a positive return of close to 25%. Horizon, we have 11 shares. It's showing a negative 1.82%. And lastly, we have XDB or BlackRock Canada iShares Canadian Select um, Dividend Index ETF. We have eight shares. It's showing a positive 16.48%. You notice here that our available cash balance in this portfolio right now is closer to 7,700. This is mainly because of the stocks and ETFs that we've sold and not necessarily because of the depositing. And I tell you, I will tell you in a, in a moment why we've done that. But before we're doing so, let us take a look at our tax free savings account and see what's going on there. We have AQN or Algonquin Power and Utilities Corp, 12 shares. It's a utilities dividend paying company uh, that uh, is showing a positive return of 4.23%. Beyond Meat, we have our one share. It's gone through so much ups and downs. At this stage, it's showing the 5.36% return. The longer term goal for us is to sell our Beyond Meat, but we want we are more comfortable selling it at closer to the 52 week high price. Um, in this case, we are waiting for it to hit again the, the likes of 170 or 180 dollars and then um, sell this uh, US dollar stock in our portfolio. With cards, it's an Evolve Automobile Innovation Index Fund each, uh, Edge ETF in Canadian dollars. We have 18 shares and it's showing a negative 2.32%. Uh, 
Emerge Arc Genomics and Biotech, EAGB. We also have 19 shares here in our tax free savings account and it's showing a negative 2.70%. Greenland Renewables, we have 162 shares. It's down heavy, uh, all, down almost 28%, but we are trying to take advantage of uh, dollar cost averaging and bring our cost average down by adding more shares of green lane renewables. It's a growth stock, so continue, continue to be like that, but definitely very um, volatile in terms of pricing and one that uh, you have to hold it for longer term if you're really uh, wanting to gain the benefit. And in this case, it can be quite risky, one that we've done our research and we are comfortable holding on to our green lane renewable shares at this time, and in fact, adding more. Highly on Holdings Corporation, we have eight shares, it's showing a negative 34%. Manulife Financials is showing 17% plus gain for our nine shares. For the most part, the trend that you're seeing, many of our finance sector stocks are doing quite well. And we bought them at really good prices. And in fact, we are, even though we are adding more to our shares, but they're, they've been doing quite well and they are solid dividend payers in this case. So we are comfortable holding on and adding more to our existing shares. NEO, we have 14 shares. It's showing a negative 25% return. PIMCO Dynamic Income Fund. It's one of our highest dividend paying stocks in our tax-free savings account. The six shares are showing close to 7% return. I believe PIMCO Dynamic return in terms of dividend yields hovering closer to uh, eight to 9%. Plug Power, we have 17 shares and it's showing negative 35%. Next, we have Invesco NASDAQ 100 Index ETF, allows you to invest in NASDAQ 100 in Canadian dollars, uh, the ticker symbol QQC.F. The one share is showing close to 3.6% return. We have a number of other uh, shares of real matters here in our tax free savings account. This one, 21 shares, and it's showing a negative 17.3%. Rio Can is a REIT or real estate investment trust. We have 17 shares and it's showing a positive 8.18% return. We've been adding to our shares because of the dividend, solid dividend pay, uh, paid to us on a monthly basis. It's actually the risk distribution. And Royal Bank of Canada, RY, here we've tried to add to fractional shares. We just started to add and you see we have fraction of share of 0.05 and it's showing a positive return of 0.4%. Uh, percent return. It's just the, one of the most recent additions to our portfolio. Shopify, we've been also trying to add to fractional share buys. Um, we have 0 0.04 fractional shares and it's showing a positive return of 3.25%. Uh, True North Commercial Real Estate Investment Trust is another REIT with ticker symbol TNT.UN. You have 39 shares and it's showing a positive return of 2.39%. Uh, moving on, we have VCN with ticker symbol, uh, which is actually showing uh, 22 percent plus return for our two shares it's vanguard fitzy canada all cap index etf we also have vanguard s p 500 index etf ticker symbol vfv we have one share it's showing a positive return of 11 percent, which is quite remarkable for a uh, fairly recent buy it hasn't been uh, longer than one or two months vmv or vmware class we have three shares it's showing a positive return of 11 percent it was down heavily almost close to eight to nine percent down the last trading day Otherwise, our return for VMware was uh, quite good before the last trading that, that we just passed by. Vanguard FTSE Canadian Cap REIT Index ETF, VRE, we have seven shares. It's showing a positive return of 19%. And lastly, we have XDIV of uh, eight shares that we have. It's showing positive return of 1.64%. For our uh, viewers, you notice here that we have 1,600 also in cash. This is also due to the fact that we sold some of our shares off a tax free savings account. Lastly, for RSP, we haven't bought or sold any at this last week, but just to quickly walk you through, we have three shares of Abbey, and we have one share of Arlo, we have 10 shares of Artist Real Estate Investment Trust, which are all in positive territory. We have 46 shares of Green Lane, it's negative territory of 14% plus. Pemco, we have one share with 47%, close to 48% return. Uh, Skyworks Solutions, one share is showing 40 six percent return and vanguard s p 500 index etf the one share is showing close to 12 percent return and lastly we have 14 shares of vmed healthcare it's showing a negative 8.39 percent return with that i'm going to uh, walk you through the stocks that we or etfs that we actually sold in our portfolio over the past uh, one week why don't we actually walk you through both buys and sells and i'm going to provide that here we have some limit buy or limit sell orders so uh, we are not interested in that let's just quickly walk through the last week's actual buys or sells you notice here that we sold our shares of bristol myers we sold our seven shares the filling price uh, that we sold them at was at 66 dollars and 76 cents us dollars 
this resulted in uh, the overall market sell value that you see here. Of course, there are some exchange rate fee when you sell any US dollar stocks through Wealth Simple Trade, and they are automatically converted into Canadian dollars. We sold uh, through our uh, other accounts. You notice here that we sold 16 shares of XIT. This was actually closer to 52 week high price for XIT, so we are happy with that at the price of $57.50 that was fulfilled. We also bought fraction of shares of TD. We bought fraction of shares of Royal Bank of Canada. We bought one share of Real Matters, the price of $11.86. We sold our EAFT or Emerge Arc, um, you know, ETFs here, and uh, that is in fin financial tech. And we managed to sell them at the price of $21.48 and get that uh, funds. Uh, the thing is with Canadian dollars, you're not paying any fee. So we are any conversion fee or any selling fee or whatsoever. So that's quite pleasant. We sold EARK as well, 45 shares at the price of $22.33 to raise more cash. We bought one share of AQN at the price of $19.65. We continue to sell EAAI as you see for the price of $24.39. Abbey, we sold four of our shares at the price of $119.83. We sold also our CHPS or the kind of this ETF that invests in semiconductors. The 10 shares, we sold them at $27.06. We sold our one share of CrowdStrike at the price of $283.35, again, closer to uh, it's high price and it has been actually one of our best returning holdings. We bought shares of TNT, uh, one share at the price of $7.58. We continue to buy uh, fractional shares of Royal Bank of Canada. Uh, CRM, we sold our Salesforce stock to three at a good price of uh, $268.53. And uh, cash that we sold also our Palantir stocks, the 10 shares at the price of $25.92. We also sold our shares of Apple. You have seven shares that we sold them at the price of $148.60. Um, you see also we sold another one share that we had in another account of Apple at the price of $148.05. We uh, continue to sell our shares of HCLN. Um, here, uh, the 30 shoe shares that we had, we sold them at the price of $15.26. Uh, Qualcomm, we also sold our eight shares at the price of $143.85. We also share, sold our shares of uh, Gilead, the four shares at the price of $72.02. Uh, bought shares of Toronto Dominion Bank, continued to buy that. Uh, bought shares of GreenLane, fractional share of Royal Bank of Canada, and GreenLane again. We also bought shares of Toronto uh, True North uh, TNT.UN and Rio Can. Those are some of the additional shares that we, uh, we bought. Uh, XDIV as well as another buys that we've had over the past week. Some familiar names as you see again continue to buy and add to our existing shares um, before at the beginning of this week that you see here so far. So those are all the shares that we bought and sold. As I mentioned, uh, the number of shares that we sold definitely outweighed the number of the ones that we bought. We raised quite uh, close to over 9,000 in cash now that we have in our account. The goal is to actually withdraw that um, from this well simple trade account. And I know temporarily it might actually bring our investment portfolio account down, but this is all done for a reason. Uh, and as I promised you, this has been, um, I wanted to share why I'm, I'm doing that. And this has been triggered by uh, doing some research and the fact that uh, there's a way for us to uh, actually take advantage of converting uh, some of our non-deductible uh, mortgage that we have in our principal resident to a deductible uh, kind of loan uh, through using uh, what is known as Smith Maneuver. Uh, this uh, past couple of days, I attended a webinar uh, that was organized by one of my good colleagues. Um, and you can check her out, uh, her Instagram page to learn more. But this uh, was a very informative webinar around Smith Maneuver uh, that was done. And based on that and doing some more readings, watching some YouTube videos around Smith Maneuver uh, directly from Robinson Smith, who is actually the son of uh, Fraser Smith, who's the founder of actually the Smith Maneuver. And also then going to the library and borrowing this book and reading more on, on this whole and actually finishing this book and getting the, the knowledge on that, following some other uh, very informative blogs on this topic and really educating myself. Uh, there is a kind of understanding that actually this could be a technique that we could use by trying to convert our existing mortgage 
and changing it, refinancing our mortgage and getting a different type of re-advanceable mortgage that allows us to take advantage of this technique, we might be in a, in a spot to um, actually set ourselves up for more success over the longer period of time. Um, we haven't quite started this. Uh, we are getting ready for it, for this transition. There are some, of course, considerations for us to be in mind. That's why I'm not providing a lot more details, but um, definitely a promise here. Once we've gone through this exercise and actually gone through it, um, definitely would be making a video to explain step by step what have been the steps we did and what have been you know the outcome of it and share that with you transparently i think it's something that you're gonna uh, like and like and want to follow um, especially this is of interest for those of you who might have a mortgage right now on your uh, primary residence uh, assuming that you've paid down at least 20 percent of your mortgage or maybe are considering to Get, go get a mortgage here in Canada with 20% down, then I think this is something that uh, might be of interest to you. If you want to learn more, of course, feel free to do your research or perhaps even borrow this book from library or even buy it. I didn't buy it. I just borrowed the book from library and did my reading. Um, but, um, you know, I think another way for you for sure would be if you want to learn from, practically from someone else's experience, make sure to follow our journey here. And I will be sharing with you what I've learned from that experience once we go through it. And of course, be sharing with you how it's actually helped us uh, kind of accelerate our uh, journey towards financial freedom, hopefully to uh, effectively using this technique to our advantage. But stay tuned. We are still in the beginning phases of that and uh, we'll definitely be sharing our experience as we learn more. In terms of our dividend income, I don't want to forget that because uh, for us in this portfolio, one, uh, one aspect of our investment is actually on dividend income. So we want to share with you uh, what that has been. Uh, you notice here our most recent dividend income. Our, we got some income from Royal Bank of Canada, uh, RY, $5.44. Apple paid us $1.94. These are all in Canadian dollars converted. Uh, we got another $0.28 uh, prior to that. But last week's dividend was just Royal Bank of Canada for $5.44, which is um, quite decent for us. We are looking forward to collecting these dividend income, especially now that we have a number of REIT or real estate investment trusts that pays us on a monthly uh, you know frequency that's definitely something nice to look forward to to grow our dividend income there you have it folks a quick look into our uh, stock investment portfolio and why we decided that we want to sell over nine thousand dollars worth of stocks or etfs in the past one week i hope you found this video beneficial and you gained something of value from it and if it sparked your interest to pursue investing in the stock market be sure to check out our referral bon uh, links which give you some bonuses to open an account with uh, call high quality brokerage accounts or if you have any question for us whatsoever feel free to leave us a comment down below and let us know what you think uh, be sure to subscribe to momentum channel for more videos about investing in the stock market uh, as well as etf investing and investing and for ways to accelerate your journey to financial freedom with that thank you so much and i hope to see you next time